All right, Myers Foot, I like talking about politics and it's drama llama time in the Conservative leadership contest as the Tories shoot themselves in the foot again and then again. And you know what? The odds are they're going to do it yet again, at least two more times in the next week, so it seems. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So actually, right now, there's a ridiculous amount of news, an absolutely insane amount of news. And there'll be some things that in an ordinary week uh, would have been pretty much top of my list and they're probably, I'm probably not even going to have time. But at least the Tory leadership candidate, which I think at the moment that the race is the most important thing in British politics, is going to uh, subside after tomorrow. Then it can become a little bit more normal for a while. But the penultimate round of voting took place yesterday and, and the final ones this afternoon. But the drama kicked off yesterday Earlier, when a bit after I'd actually uploaded my noon video, Tobias Elwood had the Tory party whip withdrawn for refusing to vote in the confidence vote the previous evening. So he didn't really refuse. But this is the confidence vote that the government brought against itself. I'd already talked about that. One which they were going to win by a huge margin because no Tory MPs wanted to vote for basically risking a general election. And also Elwood was out of the country on parliamentary business in Moldova in his capacity as chair of the Defence Select Committee. You know, there were... Uh, Boris Johnson talks about, you know, his support for Ukraine and wanting to deal with that. Tobias Elwood was trying to deal with the, the situation in terms of getting grain out. It was a very important task he was on with. And there were a handful of other Tory MPs who abstained from the vote for various reasons, but they didn't have the whip withdrawn. And the Tory whips justified this behaviour by saying, oh, yeah, but the other ones were paired. Now, pairing, if you don't know, it's the idea that if some MPs can't make it to a parliamentary vote, someone who would vote the other way agrees to abstain so that the overall result is still the will of parliament. Pairing. It's all very civilised. Uh, you know, it's also why you shouldn't jump to conclusions when MP abstains, because they may have reasons that have nothing to do with their stance on the voting question. But the thing is, though, why didn't they just pair Elwood? I mean, he was a thousand miles away and it was on parliamentary business. That's a pretty good excuse for not being able to attend parliament to vote. There are two theories as to why Johnson refused to pair Elwood and then withdrew the whip when he couldn't vote from a thousand miles away. The first is an act of petty revenge. Last year, Elwood tackled Boris Johnson in a select committee hearing where the Prime Minister insisted that tank battles in Europe were a thing of the past. Obviously, with the events a few months later in Ukraine, that video gets a lot of mileage on social media these days. Johnson's shown once more that he hasn't a clue. But also, Johnson doesn't like being challenged like that. He is a vain, petty man. For example, a few hours before he announced he'd be stepping down as Prime Minister, he sacked Michael Gove. He would never have dared do that if he were carrying on, because Gove is easily the most competent minister the Tories have. Some believe Johnson had acted here in, uh, in revenge for Elwood being a bit of a pain in, you know, in his work on the Defence Committee. It was certainly my first thought, and it's still the most likely. But then there's a second possibility, and it's that Elwood is openly backing Penny Mordaunt in the leadership contest. Well, now he's had the whip withdrawn, he's not eligible to vote anymore. Couldn't vote yesterday, won't be able to vote today. And the contest could be tight. If Mordaunt misses out by a single vote, say, now that'd cause a bit of a minor civil war within the party. Because Mordaunt is fairly popular amongst the party members. Now that could create a real rift between party and parliamentary party. Because it's one thing for MPs not to back necessarily the party members' favourite, quite another to potentially rig the contest against them. I've seen reports that there's some real anger about this move because of the impact it could have on the leadership contest. It may be that Johnson pulled this to help Liz Truss out a bit, or he may just have done it to set the cat amongst the pigeons. I actually think it was largely driven by revenge and it had a potential side benefit. I mean, Boris Johnson's got no regard for his party. He will absolutely act with reckless abandon. In fact, with the various forces pulling the Conservative uh, party every which way now. It'll take actually quite a strong leader to steady the ship once Johnson goes. The, how many people have said, and they are, it, the Conservatives are basically where Labour were a few years ago now. And, and who's going to be that strong leader? The favourite is Liz Truss now. 
Bad knock was knocked out yesterday. It's almost certainly it's almost certain that most of her voters would switch to Truss. Truss is only a few votes behind Mordon. So that's the likely scenario when today's results come out. And the latest polling on, on both YouGov and for the, the Conservative home suggests that Tory party members are very likely to vote for old pork markets. But if you look at how the latter stage of the contest have been going, you may wonder if the Conservative Party has completely abandoned political strategy. Because what, what did I say at the start? The most important thing, who can win the next general election? They've already shown that. They've already shown they're not that bothered about a leader who will deliver exactly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone. They went for Boris Johnson, not because he would deliver, but because he would deliver the general election that would then allow them to leave the EU. That was it. At the start of this week, there were five candidates left. Tom Tugendhat represented the clearest break with Boris Johnson. He was polling well in the TV debates as well. The public liked what he had to say. Essentially, Tugendhat was the leader that Labour would have struggled most to deal with. It would certainly have taken time because he could easily distance himself from the last 12 years of Tory government. Like if Sunak or Truss become the next Prime Minister, Labour is straight in. Straight in. Tom Tugendhat, that's trickier. But the Tories voted him out on Monday. At this point, there were no more tricky candidates. But the trickiest for Labour would have been Kemi Badnock. Remains to be seen how well she would handle herself in PMQs. And I, I mean, she will have spoken at the dispatch box in her role as a junior minister, but I don't remember read, uh, seeing any of them. Um, and that wouldn't have been high intensity anyway. I mean, PMQs, different matter. We'd have to see how she was. Or in an election campaign. But the thing is, she talked about change and she wasn't closely linked with Johnson, even though, as I say, she did serve in his government. But junior ministers tend to be fairly invisible to the public and, you know, most voters would consider her an actual change. And I don't think Labour would have struggled immensely against her. As with the remaining candidates, her policies were impossible and she told stupid lies during the campaign. Like she, bo she keeps boring us, or she did bore us, with tales of how uh, she put herself through uni by flipping burgers for McDonald's at minimum wage and was distraught to see all her earnings disappear in taxes. That's why she got interested in politics. There's a few problems with her assertions there. The first actually is that, that this started happening when Conservatives were last in power, actually. That was a weird one. But no, in terms of four major ones. First, one of her parents was a doctor and the other a professor. She wasn't flipping burgers to put herself through uni at all. She had a part-time job, like millions of students do, to supplement their income. Second, she didn't flip burgers at all. You know, I gather from people who worked at McDonald's at the time, they had double-sided grills. There was no burger flipping. So she lied about the nature of her work. Third, she didn't earn minimum wage because it didn't exist at the time. Labour brought it in later on. Fourth, she didn't see her earnings disappear in taxes because the amount she would have been earning wouldn't have been eligible for tax. But the impossibility of her policies aside and the easily refuted stupid lies about her past, she would still have been the trickiest for Labour to deal with quickly because being largely unknown, the public would give her a decent honeymoon period. And if she really did have a strategy, then it would give her time to lay the groundwork. The Tories voted her out yesterday. So now we've got Sunak, Truss and Mordaunt. All have served in Cabinet since the Tories came to power, although Mordaunt hasn't been for a few years. So she remains the only candidate that can't be easily blamed for the mess we're in now. It's strongly believed that the Tories will vote her out this afternoon. It's by no means certain. You know, the predictions for the last few rounds were relatively straightforward. This time, not so much. There will be a lot of deals and a lot of tactical voting going on, I suspect. But Truss got almost as many votes as Mordaunt yesterday, and it would be surprising if the clear majority of Badnock's votes did not go to Truss. In addition, it may well be that Rishi Sunak thinks he's got a better chance against Truss than Mordaunt. I don't know. There's various polls now saying a few different things. So the final ballot is going to be, you know, well, it's very likely to be the two candidates that are easiest for Labour to deal with, but none of them hold any terrors. The latest polling shows that Starmer would be any of them in a general election, but only just against Mordaunt. I wouldn't be too worried about that, though, because it's likely that that is because most of the public don't know who she is. You know, but, but the, the polling shows that he'd be either Sunak or Truss comfortably now should be a massive warning bell to the Tories, because it means that right now 
their public approval rating is too low to win a general election. So what they'd have to do is they'd have to raise it in their work as prime minister. They'd have to work wonders. And let's be honest, they're not going to. So the public will continue to see them as unsuitable. I mean, I'll do a video tomorrow discussing the relevant pros and cons of each candidate from both an opposition and a government point of view, when it's known for certain who is on that final ballot. But it's just incredible to me that the final three rounds of voting by MPs will have almost certainly seen them eliminating the one most likely to do well in general election campaign. You sort of assume that party members may vote for the unsuitable leader because they don't really know what's going on. But MPs are supposed to be a bit more clued up. But, you know, that isn't the end of them shooting themselves in the foot. Because although the TV debate on Sky was cancelled this week, because, you know, they made such an arse of the last one, I see there is to be one on Monday on BBC between the final two candidates. Have they lost their minds? For those who aren't aware, the Labour Party have just brought out a campaign video. It has won a lot of plaudits for being their best for a long time. Now, I would agree. I mean, it's a brilliant campaign video. And you know what? All it is is clips of the various Tory leadership candidates speaking during the last TV debate. We said at the time that these debates were just giving the opposition campaign material. They must be insane to be agreeing to another one. And if it is between Truss and Sunak, expect it to be quite entertaining. I reckon just as the programme is about to start, Keir Starmer should post a photo of himself getting ready to watch it with a glass of beer and a big bowl of popcorn. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.